Alright, so as I said at the top of the whole class, I want to talk about competitive picking. It's where I got my start, it's still one of the things that I love most about locks, and it has some very special considerations that you don't have to worry about when you're just picking a lock in the field or if you're picking on your couch. First of all, in competition, my medium hook doesn't exist anymore. This just isn't a tool that I use. I actually still use this in my daily life on occasion and have picked locks with it, but in competition there are other more effective tools that I know that I'm going to go to first. So we'll just get rid of this completely. Then I keep my picks broken up into stacks because I have a cascade that I move through the lock with. This isn't even all of my potential picks. However, first pick in the lock will always be my Bogota rake. I'll typically start with a little bottom tension and a Bogota rake, and if that doesn't open the lock right off the bat, I will keep tension applied, move to my DeForest diamond, start picking with that, hopefully finishing off anything that the Bogota left behind. And if that doesn't work, tension's still applied, and go back in with a half diamond and a slightly higher tension, and see if maybe, boom, open just like that. And that's just the top tier cascade to move through this lock very quickly. So, what happens when it doesn't open then? Well, my cascade keeps going, and I have a seven minute cascade. I know when I've gone three minutes, I'm gonna have to completely disregard this entire set of tools and move into a new one. Uh, once another couple of minutes has gone, I'm going to go all the way down to those profile picks that I was talking about before. But the big idea here is that I'm compartmentalizing the different tool sets because I'm compartmentalizing different techniques that I'm carrying out on the lock. So having a good working cascade that you can rely on and always have confidence that the next step in that cascade will be the step that opens the lock, it does a lot to keep you from getting nervous. There's always something to do next. Because if you've gone two minutes picking a lock with the same tool and nothing has happened, you start to doubt yourself. But as long as you always have that next step to move through, you can keep that confidence up, keep relaxed, keep easy, keep picking, and pop that lock open. So, let's bring some of these back out. We also have different tension options, and I have about three more wrenches that I'll typically keep out and available to myself. I keep those out and available because we'll see many, many, many different keyways in the course of a competition, and so I want to make sure that I have something that can fit into any keyway. I even have a different top tension wrench for particularly thick keyways that's made out of a much thicker piece of metal. One of the big considerations in competitive picking, beyond the cascade, beyond speed, beyond everything else, is your opponent. Now, in the major competitions, in the Dutch Open, the German national event, uh, the German international event, sorry, you are seated across from one individual, and you and that individual are both given a lock. You're again then given seven minutes to pick your lock, at which point you swap. You get another seven minutes to pick your lock, and whoever has the lowest cumulative time from opening both locks wins that round and gets to move on to the next, or gets a point and goes up against somebody else who got a point, so on and so forth. One of the biggest times out for me, when I was picking at my best, I was doing well, I had lost one match, but that's not a big deal, you can lose one and still make it into the finals, and then I was put up against the number two lock picker in the world, the Atomista, who's a great guy. And there was a lot of ooh and ah as we got paired up against each other because it looked like I was going to get massacred. But I was on a roll and I was picking at my best. In the end, I managed to beat Arthur, not by long, uh, but it was quite the coup and it was really exciting and I was thrilled and I knew that that would be my year. And then I had to go up against the number one in the world. And he was so calculating and taught me such a good lesson. Unfortunately, he also beat me like crazy, but he taught me a really good lesson about paying attention to your opponent. You don't need to look at what you're doing when you pick, except for when you set tension. From there, you can pick relatively absent-eyed, but if you're watching what your opponent's doing and able to get to a point where you can process what you're feeling and what you're observing at the same time, 
You can gain so much information by watching your opponent pick the lock that you are about to have to pick. When I open my lock, after having to go through quite a cascade, swapping the direction that I was applying tension, and so on and so forth, I said, open, I looked at him, he was looking me in the eyes and said, ah, and now I know how to open it too. So definitely pay attention to your opponent. If you want to practice competitive picking, get some friends together, get a local group together, time each other, you know, gentleman's bet or gentlewoman's bet. Uh, time yourself against a clock. Try to do seven minutes or less generally if you're really interested in competitive picking. And uh, yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's one of the most exciting parts for me. And it's a very different method of picking than I use when I'm not competing. Um, I'm much more slower and methodical. I start with hooks and stay with hooks most of the time when I'm picking outside of a competition. The rakes are really the most powerful in a competition because you're just going for speed. The rest of the time you typically want to go for accuracy and consistency. And let me tell you, there are people out there who only use hooks in competitions and they are deadly accurate and deadly consistent and are much, not all of them, but a couple of them are much better than I am. So one of these days I may have to give up the rakes and retrain myself just using hooks if I really want to keep up. Anyway, that's competitive picking. Hopefully that was interesting.